The almighty placebo effect. The placebo effect is traditionally defined as the phenomenon where patients experience improvements in symptoms despite receiving an inactive treatment or intervention. It is often attributed to the psychological factors such as the patient's belief in the treatment's efficacy. Now, the placebo effect is often presented as so powerful that it can lead to similar outcomes as the intervention itself. And you hear that a lot. You hear that, oh, just believing that something works can actually give you the same benefits as an intervention, medicine, treatment, whatever. But that is not entirely true. And without overloading you with information, if we look at oncology, for example, only 1% with advanced solid tumors can expect to achieve some response even in the absence of treatment. However, complete regression without treatment is extremely rare, almost at 0%. In placebo-controlled trials, the placebo effect observed may be more significant for psychological and self-rated measures relative to more objective measures uh, that are objective. <laughs> Using a placebo in psychological and medical studies is advantageous as it helps minimize the influence of patient expectations on outcomes, but many placebo studies often lack rigorous controls and fail to adequately isolate the placebo effect from other factors such as the natural history of disease or even the relationship between the patient and the healthcare provider. The placebo effect is not a uniform phenomenon and it can vary significantly, which that, and that can depend on the condition that is being treated as well as the characteristics of the population that is being treated. As mentioned, defining and accurately measuring the placebo effect is often a challenge for many researchers and there's an ongoing debate on how you can effectively design studies to account for that um, versus mistaking the placebo effect for genuine treatment for a genuine treatment effect but all that aside what about lifting and the placebo effect you may have heard and I'm sure many of you here on the Stronger by Science channel, especially if you're following Stronger by Science for a while, yes, I'm getting the metaphorical guns out just to make sure we're not, if you're listening to it, you don't think that I'm actually getting guns out. I just rolled up my sleeves slightly. You may have heard of certain infamous studies that exist out there where people were told that they were taking steroids and made steroid-like gains, although in reality, they weren't taking steroids. How is that even possible? Is the placebo effect really that powerful? And is it something we, as evidence-based lifters, can utilize to make better gains? Let's look at some of the classics, the classic papers out there, more specifically two studies that are often uh, mentioned when talking about the placebo effect and how powerful it really is. Starting with the classic study that you may have heard of called Anabolic Steroids, the Physiological Effects of Placebos. Now, it is important to note, this is a relatively old study, and you often hear it when uh, the placebo effect is mentioned in the context of lifting. Let's see what they did. They took 15 male varsity athletes that were training for two years and were allegedly training five times per week, with some exceptions when holidays and so on and so forth came about, but they were continuously training. Those subjects were then taken for four months and they trained again five times per week and tested on the following day, I assume after the four months ended. I am just quoting what the paper said. The paper is a bit difficult to understand at times, but the gist of it is they trained for four months five days a week and then were tested for their strength on the curl, the squat, the bench press, the military press standing and the seated shoulder press. And we're told, look, during this period of time, whoever, the people actually that make the most strength gains will be selected to be given anabolic steroids. And more specifically, Dianabol, a relatively well-known oral steroid known for its uh, ability to increase strength and muscle mass. But the good people at the university did the following. They randomly selected eight of those individuals after that period was, was done. And they told them, okay, they had the administrator of health and sciences present steroids to them, talk about steroids in a positive manner, essentially tell them, look, you're going to be taking steroids, they're going to do X, Y, and Z, but it was all presented very positively. And only six of them ended up making it in the study. And after four weeks, they were reassessed again for their strength. Now, as I mentioned, they were told that they will be taking Dianabol, more specifically 10 milligrams of Dianabol, and they looked at how their strength changed 
during the seven weeks pre-taking steroids, aka taking the placebo, and then how their strength changed after four weeks of taking the placebo pill that was supposedly steroids. What do you think happened? I'm now waiting for a response, even though you cannot respond, but I assume you said they made insane gains because they thought they were taking steroids, and you're absolutely right. Dear viewer, that's exactly what happened. They assessed strength at the lifts that I already mentioned, the curl, bench press, squat, military, and seated overhead press. And surprisingly, although some of you guessed it, as I said, and for some reason I have to run with this, they made insane gains. So although the participants did make some gains during the pre placebo period, more specifically, they added around five kilos to their bench, a kilo to their military press, two kilos to their sitting press, and around 2.6 kilos to their squad. After the four weeks of thinking that they were on steroids, they added some serious weight to their lifts. And keep in mind, these participants were not untrained. Their numbers were relatively solid, especially their bench press numbers. More specifically, they gained 13 kilos on their bench, 7 kilos on military press, 5 kilos on the sitting press, and 19 kilos on their squat. Now, these are big increases, especially in four weeks. There are likely increases that would be considered meaningful by the majority, if not all, powerlifting coaches and athletes out there. And if we actually look at what is required to go up a placing in IPF Worlds, if you want to move from one place on the podium, not on the podium uh, specifically, but one place in the rankings to the ranking above, you'd require somewhere around 16 kilos uh, on your total. So on squat, bench, and deadlift combined. And these individuals added 19 kilos to their squat in just, just a few weeks, just four weeks of thinking that they were on steroids. So what does that tell us? Is it possible to actually gain 40 pounds on your squat in just a month simply by telling yourself that you're on steroids? This study somewhat supports that, but unfortunately, if we look at the fine print, there are some important terms and conditions that we need to consider. For starters, these individuals were not training in a supervised setting. They were left on their own devices. They were told, hey, go ahead and train. You are on steroids now. And if you ask me, my assumption is that they trained much harder and did much more than they previously were doing, or at least they pushed themselves harder, they adhered to training better, and overall, they made their training so much more effective simply because they thought that they were on steroids. Uh, additionally, the belief that they were on steroids may have positively affected their stress, stress, expectations, and in general, allowed them to create a much more, quote-unquote, anabolic environment as far as their nutrition and sleep goes. They may have been more on top with their nutrition and sleep simply because they were told by the university, by the administrator of health and health services that, hey, you're going to be taking steroids and those are going to lead in great gains and so on and so forth, which heavily limits what we can take from this study and whether we can attribute this insane, these insane gains to just the placebo effect. Additionally, we're only talking about six individuals here. As much as this is a cool-ish study, it is a pilot study at the very best. We're talking about a lot of crucial details missing from its methodology. Uh, we do not know a lot of details as far as what the participants did training-wise, what they did outside the gym, how much that changed, and the fact that there were only six individuals heavily and I mean that, heavily influences how much stock we can put on such a study. At best, it's a cool study to mention on Christmas dinner table when talking about placebo and then be a party pooper and mention all the disclaimers that I just mentioned. Because, hey, honestly, like, not much stock can be put on this study. Similarly, we have another classic study by fellow Greek lead author where they took 11 national powerlifters that were around... 80 to 93 kilos with only two of those benching below 200 kilos. And they also benched four plates plus. So we're talking actual beasts. These athletes were in an environment where they trained with a coach and they had been doing so for the past two years when the study uh, commenced. And they essentially had a ton of trust in their coaches. And they were also told that they were going to be taking steroids. Before that, they had some basic strength testing in 
powerlifting competition in a powerlifting competition setting where they had to actually adhere to powerlifting competition standards in terms of pausing the bench, squat depth, and so on and so forth. They were tested for strength, uh, and then they were told, you are going to now take Dianabo, similarly to the previous study, but they took some sugar pills. And then were told to train uh, for the following week. They all reported an increased vigor during training, and they said that they lifted heavier weights or completed more repetitions than usual, potentially breaking PRs during that week. It's not really clear if they actually achieved all-time PRs, but they did mention that training was much better during that week. So after training and thinking they were taking steroids, they tested their strength again and saw that people were making great gains, but then they took roughly half of the participants and actually revealed to them that they were indeed not taking steroids and they were just taking a placebo pill. They then asked them, hey, do you want to keep taking the placebo pill? And they said no. But they left the other group unaware of the placebo and that group actually maintained that rate uh, of progress that was extreme. They kept gaining strength even in that week, whereas the other group did not. They, they didn't see any further improvement. Now, before we get super hyped, uh, we're talking about just two weeks, one RM testing. There may have been some form of learning effect there where they essentially peaked better because they did a bunch of testing um, the previous weeks as well. So there may have been something to that. Obviously, the hype from thinking that they're on steroids could have helped. But keep in mind, we're talking about a few weeks here. We're talking again about just a few individuals. But in terms of methodological rigor, um, that study it does not allow us again to put a whole lot of confidence on the fact that it was just the placebo effect that led to them making these insane gains. At the same time, we are talking about individuals that were exceptionally strong, so that's really cool because they were insanely strong before the study as well, and the fact that they made gains is definitely interesting, but we're talking about 11 individuals, certain details missing as far as their training goes, and at the same time, we cannot discount the effect that the strength testing itself may have had on some of them experiencing greater strength gains when they were tested, despite thinking that they were on steroids. So is the placebo effect something you can actually use to your advantage? The answer there is yes and no. It's important to note that on the yes side of things, um, you are likely not going to be able to replicate what they did in these studies and have somebody tell you you're taking steroids. If you are the friend of somebody and you want to give them a sugar pill and replicate the experiment, I don't think I should legally recommend it for whatever reason. I'm going to be better safe than sorry, but that could be one way. Joking aside, another way would be to just really believe in whatever you're doing at the moment, especially if there is a ton of scientific evidence behind its effectiveness. Let's say you've downloaded a Stronger by Science program and you you are looking to get stronger and increase your muscle mass. You know that the program is solid, there are plenty of testimonials, it's based on actual scientific principles. So going into the gym and going into the program, believing that it will work um, and it, that it will do wonders for you, may not necessarily actually increase the size of your muscles or your strength to a super physiological level as if you were taking steroids. However, it is likely going to have some positive influence and worst case scenario, you're gonna make the same gains you would even if you didn't practice that. The same goes with new training techniques that you could be using, for example, like in partials, or if let's say you've all of a sudden reorganized your diet and now you're getting more protein in and you're improving your sleep and your stress management, you can tell yourself that those things are gonna make a huge difference and are gonna really help you get to the next level. So that's one way you could do it. Obviously, you cannot just take a sugar pill and tell yourself, yep, I just took steroids. Obviously, if you have the ability to do that, that could be another way, but that would be very difficult unless you have one of those devices they had in uh, Men in Black where you'd have to erase your own memory, but then how much of your memory are you erasing and will you remember that you erased your memory? It's, it's a whole, it's a whole other kind of worms there that I would advise you not to try, especially if you have that device. But overall, the placebo effect is not entirely what we're used to hearing. It's not that you can suddenly grow muscle by just thinking that you're growing muscle or whatever. And in those studies, although 
cool and interesting, there are methodological limitations that don't allow us to necessarily to say with a lot of confidence that just thinking you're taking steroids uh, will make you bigger. Obviously, it would be cool to see studies replicating those protocols with uh, better design overall and more control over training and uh, other variables that can influence adaptations. But until we have those studies, I wouldn't necessarily tell anyone that, hey, placebo in yourself will get you steroid-like gains. Obviously, it can help you get a bit more out of your workouts, but I don't think you can replicate uh, the effects of a steroid cycle simply by believing you're in a steroid cycle. Sorry to break it to you, I love placeboing things, but the placebo effect may be a bit of a placebo itself. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out strongerbyscience.com for a bunch of cool stuff. Check out the podcast where we release much longer uh, form content, where we deep dive into stuff. Feel free to check out the coaching page as well for excellent one-to-one -one coaching, premium online coaching by some of the best in the game over at strongerbyscience.com slash coaching. I am done plugging stuff for Stronger by Science. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, hit the notification icon, leave a like, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.